Hey guys, what's up? It's Fran. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today, first of all, isn't it so cute that you can see my little green wall peeking out now? I'm obsessed. We are actually gonna be doing some maintenance on this in this video. So yes, we are doing another episode of plant chores. I have some fun things on my list right here. I guess I'll just give you the rundown. I feel like we're really just like hopping into things. Look at how cute all of it is too. Oh my goodness. I like to just give a rundown though. So the first thing on my list is to chop and prop my Epipremnum skeleton key. We put this plant on a moss pole, honestly, not even that long ago, maybe like six weeks ago, and it's already grown past the moss pole. So we are going to be taking a couple cuttings from the top of that plant. And then I have a Nepenthes cutting. I showed it in my August highlights, August like update video, um, that I have a Nepenthes cutting in water and apparently moss works a lot better for rooting them. It works a lot faster. So I do want to switch that cutting over into moss. And then we are going to be chopping up, my friends. I don't know why I just like randomly added this to the list today. And I feel like this is something that stresses me out, but I guess we're just like jumping into it. And that is chopping up my philodendron varicosum. That plant is also at the top of its moss pole. And I wanna get a couple of cuttings before it starts growing even more because I don't like to take cuttings when a new leaf is emerging. So I feel like right now is like the perfect time to do it. And then I have a couple of pond plants that I want to repot. I always put off like repotting my pond plants, but I have that crystal star soilless mix now. So I want to get them into that. And then I have a couple of rooted Cebu blue cuttings that I'm going to be adding into my mother plant. And my Cebu blue is looking so good these days, like the best it's ever looked. Um, so I can't wait to show you that. And then last but not least, we are going to be doing some maintenance to my plant wall. Like I said, before we ensue with all the plant chores, I am going to quickly talk about today's sponsor. So today's video is kindly sponsored by, can you hear all of eating? <laughs> today's video is kindly sponsored by none other than Harry's. These razors have been carrying me through the summer, you guys. They work so well, super high quality. If you want a close, comfortable shave, you have to check these out. They are made with German engineered steel blades, have a super comfortable and like substantially heavy, like this isn't like no flimsy razor handle. It has a nice weight to it. You can also choose different colors for the handle, which I think is very cute. And it is made with 50% recycled plastic. Harry's believes in fair price razors for everyone. So there's no outrageous pink tax. It is just a high quality product at an affordable price for everyone. Their shave gel is also amazing. You only need like the smallest amount and it goes so far and it's made with skin loving ingredients like hyaluronic acid and aloe vera. So it's fine for sensitive skin as well. I have also been using and enjoying their body washes, which, oh my goodness, you guys, these smell so good. Mm. It doesn't get fresher than that, which is relevant because now in the starter set, you also get a free little body wash, which like, I feel like Harry's just really is going all out here. So in the starter set, you get a weighted handle, five blade razor, blade cover, foaming shave gel, and a body wash. So if you would like to try out Harry's, now is the best time. The first 1,000 people to purchase a starter set will get a free body wash to try if you go to harrys.com slash wildfern. Everything will be linked down below in the description box. Thank you so much to Harry's for making this video possible. Okay, so we are going to start with the skeleton key. Now, well, let me show you first what it looks like. It is looking so good. Look at that last leaf that came out. So pretty. So like I said, it's grown over the moss pole at this point and I wanna take a cutting. So let me move that guy. I think, oh my gosh, there's grass growing out of my sphagnum moss. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and snip here because none of these are attached into the moss pole so this is what that little cutting looks like and this guy is in the crystal star nursery soilless mix i'll show you it's actually so well rooted in here now it's crazy um like look at the roots oh my gosh they're growing right out of the pot crazy. Anyway, so I'm thinking that since it is in this pond already, I'm just going to root this directly into the pond. So I'm just going to stick it back into the pot or I'm going to try to. I guess I can just do this all together. I don't think I'm going to separate the cutting. So I think I'm just going to do it like this. I'm trying to get it buried in there so that the node is covered. 
I think that's pretty good. Whoop. Okay. I hope that that works because I really like this cutting. It's so cute. Maybe I'm going to actually attach, there's a node right here. It's kind of hard to tell. I'll, sh I'll show you after, closer to the camera. I just need to get this attached first. Okay, so I just pinned the second node so that it's against the moss. So hopefully that can just root in there as well at the same time. But that is the cutting, those two leaves there. There is a new one on the way, so hopefully that does well. It's cool to see a comparison of what it looked like before to now, what the leaves are looking like. Okay, I thought I would show you from this view. You can see it a little bit better. Look at how gorgeous that is, oh my goodness. Um, so what I was talking about is like the size of the leaves from the top cutting compared to what the size used to be. So now we're starting from this size at the bottom. So it'll be really cool to see what it looks like once it reaches the top again. Anyways, I'm just going to add a little bit of water just on top of where the cutting was just to kind of like moisten the area around it. This reservoir already does have water, so I don't really need to like fill it up or anything. It's all good, but I don't know. I just don't want it to be like dry around there for any amount of time so yeah okay so that is the skeleton key all done I'm gonna go put it back in its spot it just lives in the south facing window here Let's see if I can get it back with this hand no I need my other hand Okay, so next on my list is this Nepenthes. Look how gross this looks. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to take it to the kitchen. Okay, so like I said, this has been rooting. Hasn't really been doing anything, but it's been sitting in water for probably a couple of weeks now. One of the leaves has died, so I'm going to remove this leaf and then I am going to stick the remaining cutting into sphagnum moss. I need to get it out of here though. This is just like unwell. Gross. I'm just trying to look and see if there's like anything happening here, but I don't think there is. I'm gonna cut this leaf off, I guess. They don't really rip off easily. So now this is what it looks like. I'm going to rinse it. There's some gross like bugs on here, fungus gnats. And then I'm going to use just a little cup to root this in. So I'm going to fill that with sphagnum moss. This is like slightly damp. I'm going to have to get it more, more damp though. I think it'll stay in here better at least, which is good, because that water contraption that I had set up was not it. Okay, moss is all in there. I'm just going to go get my little squirt bottle. This little tiny baby pitcher. I don't think it's going to like come in, but oh, so cute. I am just going to wet the moss. This is about a thousand times better than <laughs> the water setup that I had going. Oh man. I didn't even talk about why I chose to take a cutting of my pitcher plant. Uh, the reason is basically because mine is just not doing that well. And somebody commented that it would be better if it was in sphagnum moss, like the the potting soil that I potted it in, which is a carnivorous potting soil, it's better for different types of carn. I don't remember the whole, like, this is either in a comment or a message or something, I don't remember, and I don't remember the whole what they said. But basically what they were saying is that I should have my Nepenthes in sphagnum or just like basically not the mix that I have it in right now. 
and it would just be so difficult to transfer that plant out of that soil into sphagnum moss because it would just be so hard to get it off of the roots and stuff so i thought i would just start fresh by rooting a cutting into sphagnum moss i have no idea if this is gonna work this is very experimental i am like so far from being an expert <laughs> in carnivorous plants or nepenthes but um i am excited to like experiment and try to grow them to the best of my abilities um yeah i'm just gonna put them back in the same spot on the windowsill much improved very happy with that i have been missing this new mcdowell leaf like 10 times a day because they i've said this before but they always get stuck when they're unrolling and then they get these lines these creases so that's happened to literally every single leaf this plant's given me so i'm really just like trying to see if i keep it lubricated can i avoid that so i'm just coming in you know every every couple hours and just giving it a quick little mist so i will you know keep you posted as to whether that helps or not okay you guys next is the big one the philodendron barricosum chop I don't even know, like I haven't even thought out like how many cuttings I'm gonna take, like how I'm gonna do this. I know I for sure want these two top leaves. So this one and this one here, I really want to create a new plant with those leaves particularly. Maybe I'm just gonna take those two cuttings. I think I might do that. And then I want to get them, I'm gonna root them in water and then I'm going to put them on a thickly pole so that is my plan and then these will be the starting leaves so hopefully the new leaves that i get onward from there will just like keep continuing to size up i mean they'll probably be smaller when they first come out but then they'll size up more quickly than you know like these small leaves down at the bottom so we're just gonna go for it we're just gonna go for it oh my goodness okay uh let me start by just removing the tape okay I'm just gonna go ahead and take the top one. Oh my goodness I did it <gasps> look at this <gasps> is that not like so incredibly beautiful are you kidding me that is so nice that is so nice <laughs> look at the back <gasps> I cannot with philodendron virgosum. It is so striking. Oh my goodness. Wow. I cannot believe that this came from a little baby plant that I started. Like, how cool is that? Okay, so there is cutting number one. Okay, so I think this one is rooted into the moss pole a bit, the second. Cutting. I'm just gonna like chop it and then I'll try to figure that out. Okay, I'm just gonna chop it right there. One of my clips is here, which by the way, I'm, oh, oh no, it's still, I was just gonna say that I'm really liking these. Is it rusty? I don't know, there's something on it. Anyways. Um, okay, so now I just have to get it. <laughs> Shoot, I need my spray bottle. Okay, I'm gonna try to wet the moss. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the roots out, but I'll try. Of course, this moss is like dry right now. It's not helpful. Something is telling me that I'm not going to be able to get these roots out, which is fine, but if I cut the moss pole, but I just don't really feel like cutting this moss pole. Oh, no, I busted them. <laughs> I busted them. That's okay. Dang, I thought they were going to come for a second. No go. No go. Okay, that's fine though. Roots will grow back. 
Okay, so here is the second cutting. Very beautiful as well. A little bit smaller than the top cutting, but pretty big still. And I can see where the new growth is going to come out there. Very exciting. So that's both of them together. They're so pretty. So yeah, like I said, rooting in water and then these are going to start a new plant. Oh my goodness, how incredible is that going to be? I'm so excited. I feel like I'm finally getting to the point where I'm able to kind of like reap the rewards of chopping all these plants up, propagating, putting a whole bunch of them on poles and then waiting for them to grow to the top of the pole. Now it's happening where I can actually take the cuttings from the top of the pole and start a new bigger plant. So that feels good, that's very cool. I'm gonna go find a vessel to propagate those in. Okay, let's pop these guys in. There's one. Oh my goodness, I'm so obsessed. And then there is two. Look at that, wow. Probably two of the nicest cuttings I've ever taken from any plant ever. That is where I decided to put it. It's gonna get lots of light and then I can keep an eye on the progress here. So cute. Okay, I'm gonna do my pawn repotting next. I apparently need to order more of these self-watering pots because this is the last one I have. I thought I had two left and I was also gonna repot my Philodendron Florida Ghost, but I only have one. So I'm just gonna be repotting my Anthurium Viterifolium, the one that's living in pawn, obviously. Uh, I showed y'all the newest leaf recently, but just look at it again. It is so pretty. Look at that. It looks like it's actually starting to size up now, which is so cool. Um, so I'm repotting this just because, well, for a couple of reasons, actually. First of all, this is filthy. It's full of algae. This one is not wearing a sock. I don't know why it's not wearing a sock, but it's full of algae. Um, and I, this is a closed system, so I just keep some water in here and it works, but I really prefer something like this where it's in like a mesh pot or just its own pot with drainage holes and then it's sitting in a reservoir. Now you can make this setup easily, like my Philodendron Florida Ghost is just in two plastic cups and the one that it's actually planted in just has holes at the bottom and then it's sitting in a plastic cup that doesn't have any holes. I just prefer like the reservoir method a lot more than having it potted directly in here. I just feel like it works better and there's like more airflow and yeah, I don't really know. It's just a feeling, just a feeling that I have and a preference that I have when it comes to um, ponds. So yeah, I'm just gonna pull this guy out of here. Oh my goodness. I'm just getting off like the excess. are so satisfying they're so chunky wow okay so now i am going to be potting this plant into the crystal star pond which is right here this stuff I have been using this for the past like month and my plants that I have in this are taking off. They really love it. So that's why I'm going to be switching this plant. That's another reason that I'm repotting this plant into here. I guess there's multiple reasons that I am repotting this plant today. New substrate, new setup, uh, no more algae. So yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit in and I'll rinse this through at the sink after as well. Oh man. Is it gonna fit? 
He is, but he's gonna need to be repotted again pretty soon. Okay, I'm just gonna fill it up now. One of the plants that I was trialing in this substrate is an anthurium too. So that makes me more confident in potting this anthurium into it. I mean, it's probably gonna be better than my DIY pond. <laughs> Let's be real. Oh my gosh, this plant is so crazy. It's like trying to run right out of here. I'm just gonna take a look around it. Make sure it's all in there. Okay. That looks pretty good. Roots are all in there. There's not too many big like gaps. So this is ready to be rinsed at the sink and then just filled up. I'll probably fill it up to like, I don't know, halfway. The pot's not very deep in these, so yeah. Maybe I'll remove like this yellow leaf here. He's had these yellow leaves like clinging on for so long. I'm kind of sick of them. I'm gonna remove that one. And he's got this one too. I think I'm gonna remove that one too. He has so many other leaves, I don't think it's gonna matter. This is just some fertilizer water. I'm gonna fill it up with this. Should be good. Okay, so is he looking a little crazy? Yes. Do I need to order more and bigger self-watering pots? Yes. But I think that this is going to be good for now. I think that he'll be happy. And there's actually a new baby leaf on the way. So hopefully that will continue to come in and get nice and big for us. Yeah, so I'm just going to put him back in his spot in the cabinet. I got a little nervous that the pot wasn't gonna fit in that basket, but it like just fits. So yeah, I guess I'll have to consider that when I repot it as well. Cause I love having it like hanging down here. Okay, so onto my Cebu Blue. I said that I wanted to show you guys what it is looking like now. First of all, I recently chopped it. Obviously those are the cuttings that we are going to be potting into it, like I said. So these are my rooted Cebu Blue cuttings in here. Um, so I took those cuttings a couple, maybe like three or four weeks ago actually. And since I did, it has been pushing off so much new growth, like from all different places, especially the top here. This is the good thing about trimming your plants because it often encourages like new um, vines to emerge and just like makes your plant fuller. So this is the new growth that shot off. I cut it right here, you can see. This is an older leaf, and then that's the new vine with a leaf coming out right there. It's kind of hard to tell, but um, yeah, that is shooting off. And yeah, this plant is just looking so good. It was struggling for quite some time, but look at how long it is now. Like, it's crazy. I just cannot believe how beautiful it's looking. It's it's loving, just like living in my bedroom, hanging off my bed, it's so cute. So I'm just gonna be finding spots to sneak those cuttings in. I actually watered this plant this morning, so I would have liked to water it in after, but I mean, that's okay. It's already nice and moist in here, I guess, for the cuttings. Um, I feel like this might be a little tricky because there are quite a bit of roots in this pot. But I'm just gonna try to do my best. So let me see how big these cuttings are. Um, I'm gonna be cutting off the ends cause that's way too long to fit in there. I'm gonna do that. Boop. It's a really nice root and it has a growth point right there. Very good. So I'm just gonna like guide the root into the little hole that I dug and stick this guy in. So I get him in there and then I just kind of cover him up, try to bury it. And then it will hopefully just root down into the potting mix. 
Now, I have a little eyeball crystal in here, which I love, but I'm going to move it over. So, let's try one right here. This plant is really going to be full now. Like, holy smokes. Okay, another really nice one. Exact same, has an even bigger growth point there and a really nice root. Gonna cut off the bottom of the stem and do the same thing. Now water roots are pretty delicate, so just try to be gentle when you do this part. But other than that, super, super easy. Okay, nice. I don't even know like how many more I can fit in here. Maybe only like one more. We'll see. Maybe I can sneak one more in, like here, at the very edge, I'll try. This one has shorter roots, so I can probably get it in there. All right. I think that they are all in there. So once those grow, yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of vines coming out of this thing. Oh my goodness, this needs to be repotted like soon too. Oh wow. Do you see the layers of roots here? That's crazy. I don't even know what I'm gonna repot this into. Actually, I have like those hanging basket pots that are wider. I'll probably use those and then I'll be able to add my last little Cutting. So maybe I'll wait a couple weeks until those cuttings root into here and then I'll repot this plant. So that'll be a fun project. I haven't repotted like a big trailing plant like this in a while. Okay, so the last thing I want to do, like I said, is just some maintenance on my hanging plants. And what I mean by that is mostly this one. This is the one that I'm always having to like pick leaves off of. I don't know if it's just because the light requirements are not being met for this plant, which is totally possible because the leaves are so light. I don't know, but it has just not been happy. Like the rest of the plants up here are pretty happy. I mean, the Brazil is not the happiest, but the other ones are doing really well. So yeah, this one has just like never been thriving up here which sucks this is like such I mean I, it's lucky that it was such a large like full plant when I got it because there'd probably be nothing left of it if um if it wasn't it looks like it finally is starting to get some new growth though like what is even going on here okay it tried to put out a new leaf there it's like attached oh shoot yeah, this guy's a hot mess, really. It's actually due for watering, so I just took it down, and I can tell that they're due for waterings when, well, when the soil is dry to the touch, but also by the weight, like, this is so much heavier when it's full of water. Um, so I'm just gonna look through, and there are some new leaves coming in, so that's good. I mean, maybe it's just taking a really long time to adapt to my house. That's what I said before. I'm just, like, not willing to accept that it's dying. It's not dying, it's just struggling. Um, okay, so let's just remove everyone that needs to be removed. Oops, that just like came off and I didn't mean to. So what I think is gonna happen is I think since it's getting low light, it's going to revert back to like darker leaves, which would be fine, honestly, like if that's what it needs to do. Oh, there's a new little baby leaf here. So cute. Anyways, I'm gonna bring this into the shower because that's how I water these planters. That's just what I've been doing. And then I'm gonna check if any of the other ones need to be watered. 
Okay, I just watered the mic in separately because this one isn't actually planted into the Wally Grow planter. It's still in just like a nursery pot. So I just watered that, that with some fertilizer water. And then these ones have slow release fertilizer because I just water them with the shower. These are the only two that are thirsty. So I'm just gonna spray them down. And then I just leave them in here overnight because I just want them to like drip off and dry as much as possible so it's not like getting my wall wet or anything. I do towel them off, towel the planter off before I hang them back up, but yeah, it's just easy to leave them here overnight. So that brings us to the end of the video. I hope that you enjoyed these plant chores. Can't wait to keep you guys updated on the varicosum. Hopefully in a few weeks we will be potting that baby up together. Don't forget to grab yourself a starter set from Harry's. Remember the first 1,000 people who get one will get a free body wash included with their starter set. Again, the link is harrys.com slash wildfern and I will have everything linked down below in the description box. That is gonna be it for today, friends. I hope that you are all doing so well. Leave me a comment. I can't wait to chat with you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Try